Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I will be discussing why I think Formula E isn't more environmentally friendly than Formula 1. This might sound really weird at the beginning but we will get it once we go through the video. But first for the people who don't know what Formula E actually is, yeah what is Formula E? Formula E is a motorsport series that just has all electric cars. So basically it's a series which just uses cars that are fully electric. The Motorsport series was founded in 2014 or was started in 2014 and has grown massively since then. A lot of people say that Formula E has the most competitive field or competitive grid in any motorsport series because the grid is so close up. But obviously that is very debatable. But as I said before, Formula E is just all electric cars. The cars obviously have a battery that runs the car and also a powertrain which consists of an inverter, motor and transmission. Obviously Formula E isn't as big as Formula 1 so the Formula E race calendar is obviously also not as big as the Formula 1 race calendar that consists of 23 races now this year. Formula E normally has about like 12 to 13 races a year but they go to ordinary places such as Saudi Arabia where the race was actually yesterday Marrakesh or Santiago for example but Formula E also has some really really good drivers some ex Formula 1 drivers such as Stoffel van Dorn who raced in Formula 1 with McLaren from 2017 to 2018 there's Jean-Éric Verne who is a two-time Formula E champion and was racing with Toro Rosso the Red Bull Junior team in Formula 1 and young talent such as Nick De Vries who actually won the Formula E race yesterday and was Formula 2 champion in 20. 19. But now let's start with the video and I will explain why I think Formula E isn't more environmentally friendly than Formula 1. So I will be giving different reasons to explain this and first I will start with the powertrains. Obviously Formula 1 uses the internal combustion engines or the V6 hybrid engines. Obviously these engines only run with fuel. Without fuel the engines would not work, would not, would not run. So obviously that means Formula 1 is using fuel which means that produces CO2. So when Formula 1 is racing their cars they are producing CO2 but if you compare that to the whole carbon emissions that Formula 1 produces over a whole year the engine part or just the racing part is only 0.7% of the whole carbon emissions that Formula 1 produces over a whole calendar year so basically the engines produce nothing. Formula E obviously uses batteries and a powertrain but obviously the cars are all electric which means the Formula E races are net zero carbon or the Formula E powertrains are net zero carbon they don't produce any CO2 any carbon emissions but obviously they run with batteries and sometimes nowadays when batteries, when you get rid of bad batteries, that process can also harm the environment. But yeah, obviously, as I said, Formula E is net zero carbon with their batteries and their power chain. But obviously, Formula One wants to become net zero carbon by 2032. And by 2025, with the new engine regulations, they want to become carbon neutral. And with that said, that Formula One wants to become carbon neutral by 2030, that means that by 2030, considering just the racing part, there will be no difference between Formula 1 and Formula E. Because Formula 1 wants to use biofuels that are net zero carbon, and Formula E is obviously net zero carbon already nowadays. But the CO2 emissions produced by the engines in Formula 1 are so low nowadays. Obviously, yes, they still produce CO2 emissions, but that is not as much as other things in both motorsport series produce, which I will come to now. But with the engines only producing 0.7% of the whole carbon's emission in a whole year, what are the other factors? So, in 2018, F1 calculated its total carbon emissions at, 200, at 256,551 tons, not including fans or transport to races. But a whole 45% of that figure came from logistics and shifting freight. Obviously, the logistics is a huge part in Formula 1. The things that Formula 1 has to bring to each race weekend is massive. There are a lot of things they have to bring. 
And here you can see something by DHL. Their key stats of Formula 1 logistics over a whole year. And there you can see on the right, Formula 1, the, the whole logistics, they travel around 131,995 kilometers per year. I obviously will compare that to the Formula E stat so that this number will actually tell you something. But before we do that, we will look at the Formula E graph. In Formula E, 72% of their CO2 carbon footprint comes from freight and logistics. Obviously, a few other stuff from staff travel, they included spectators travel, which Formula 1 didn't, but a whole 72% comes from the logistics. And here you have the same graph from DHL, but for Formula E. And there you can see they only travel around 70,000 kilometers a year, which is obviously around 50,000 kilometers less than Formula 1. And Formula E obviously has a few less things they have to bring to a race weekend. But you have to think now. Formula E, their calendar is almost half as long as a Formula 1 calendar. So obviously Formula E are not traveling as much as Formula 1 teams do. But Formula E obviously wants to grow in the future. They always say they want to come the, become the pinnacle of motorsport. And if they want to do that, they have to widen their championship. They have to make their calendar bigger, which means they have to travel more too. So in the end, when Formula E will grow, they will also have the same amount of traveling time or traveling distance over a whole year. Plus, also nowadays, yes, the Formula E uh, series travels less than the Formula 1 series, but they both travel with the same planes. They both fly with planes to the places they want to go. Obviously, Formula 1 sometimes just take the uh, bus or car or whatever. If it's in Europe, they don't fly there. But if they do, they both fly with the, with the same type of planes. So there's no difference in that regard between Formula 1 and Formula E. But here you have a Formula 1 race team that travels to a race weekend. So as you can see, there are a lot of people. And this is a group that travels to a Formula E race weekend. Obviously, that's not all of them. There's still a few more, but obviously a lot less than Formula 1. But obviously, as I said before again, Formula E wants to grow. Obviously, if they want to grow, they need to bring in more people. And if they bring in more people, more people have to travel too. And there we come to the same thing as with Formula 1. They all fly with the same planes. Obviously, Formula 1 E has a lot less logistics and things. But if they want to grow, they will have more. And they will have more people working in Formula E. So as I said, in the traveling regard, there is no difference between Formula 1 and Formula E. Obviously, yes, Formula E travels less. But in the future, that won't be the case anymore. Now we come to the next factor, which are the tires. I just wanted to talk a bit about them. Obviously, Formula 1 has five different tire compounds over a race weekend, which are the soft, the medium, and the hards for the dry, and two tires for the wets, the intermediates, and the full wets. Obviously, there are a huge amount of tires that are used over the course of a Formula 1 race weekend. Obviously, when these tires are used, they get sent back to Europe and they get burnt there at really, really high temperatures. But since they are burnt at such high temperatures, there are no CO2 emissions that go out into the... Or there's no CO2 that is produced and goes out into the environment and into the air. So there's no CO2 emissions while burning them. And here you can see, after Grand Prix, all remaining tires are sent to Didcot and when they arrived, they get burned to produce fuel for cement factories. That is almost the same with Formula E. Formula E obviously only has one type of tire compound which they can use for the dry and the wet. And over the course of the whole race weekend, they just have two different sets of tires. So basically eight tires with them. So that is a lot less than in Formula 1. But the tires in Formula E, when they're finished or where they are used, they're not reusable anymore. They also get sent to Europe and they get recycled too. So both Formula 1 and Formula E is a process with the tires that is not harming the environment, which is obviously a good thing for both. And now we come to the final factor, their crashes. 
Obviously, in Formula 1, yes, there are a few amount of crashes over a whole race weekend. And mostly it's just, as you can see here, Alexander Albon crashing in Singapore 2019 in practice 2. He lost his front wing, or he broke his, his front wing. Obviously, these crashes, you have to obviously then build these components again. And manufacturing these components, and manufacturing actually the whole car, is harming the environment or is not environmentally friendly. Obviously, the amount of CO2 that is produced is obviously not as much, but still it is not as environmentally friendly. In Formula E though, you can see sometimes it's... Formula E races are sometimes a bit like bumper cars too. They just bump to, into each other and the real rim is broken or the thing that goes over the wheel is broken. So personally, I have the feeling that yes, in Formula 1 there are crashes. But I think in Formula E, there are more things that get broken over the course of a race weekend. And obviously, they have to manufacture these parts new too. So that is also harming the environment. So all in all, you can say Formula E isn't actually more environmentally friendly than Formula 1. Yes, obviously, on the racing side, you could might say because Formula E is net zero carbon and Formula 1 isn't. But... The amount of CO2 that Formula 1 engines produce is actually not that much. And they want to be, Formula 1 wants to become net zero carbon by 2030, which means by 2030 there won't be any difference between Formula E and Formula 1 on the racing side. And also nowadays, the amount of CO2 that a Formula 1 engine produces is not that much. The, the thing that produces the most CO2 is the logistics and the traveling. But obviously, Formula E also has that, you know, they go to. They go everywhere to the world. They go to Chile, they go to Saudi Arabia, they go to China. So they also travel a lot. Obviously, the distance that they travel is less in form than in Formula 1. But that is because Formula 1 is a bigger motorsport series. And when Formula E will be as, or they want to become as big as Formula 1. And if they want to, they also have to widen their calendar. And that means they have to travel more. There, there's not really a big difference in that regard. So that's why I think that Formula E is necessarily more environmentally friendly than Formula 1. So thank you very very much for watching. I really really hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there were some nice interesting things. And yeah, if you enjoyed so please smash that like button, subscribe for more Formula 1 content. Thank you very very much for watching. See you next time. Good. Bye.